the sun is out, the snow has finally melted, <laughs> we're into spring. And so three weeks left until the end of classes and uh, we've got about a couple more topics left, right? So I'm going to cover final topic in channel, uh, chapter 19, conservation of momentum and then um, starting somewhere in the middle of next class, I'll even get onto our final chapter which is on vibrations, okay? Um, any questions or major difficulties so far with work, energy, momentum, impulse for rigid bodies? Anything? So the question, the question is parallel axis theorem, I A is equal to I G plus M D squared. What is the D for? The D, the D really, we've derived it before. The D is really for the fact that, you know how when you do I G, I G I told you was the, the smallest mass moment of inertia that you're going to find for any rigid body because it's right in the center of mass, right? But just like with the slender rod, when you shift it from the center of the rod to the end, mass moment of inertia has to increase. So that D takes care of that, right? Okay? All right, so, so let, me, let me go on to conservation of momentum. Look, I told you before that this was all about expanding what we already know from particles and systems of particles. So here's what we're gonna say. If your impulses are equal to zero, Right? Or if your moments about g are equal to zero, right? If any of those things are true, then what do we know? We know that for sure your linear momentum at time one is going to be equal to linear momentum of time two. Your hg at one is going to be equal to your hg at two. And we can equally apply this to your sum of moments about O. So if you did sum of moments about O like that, then same thing, you would have HO is HO from time point one to time point two, right? Really easy to put these on the board. Gets a little harder when you start having problems. Uh, and you've got to actually figure out whether or not a situation does entail conservation of momentum with no external impulses and no external moments, right? But, but, the, but the principles are the same, right? So, so if I just give you this as our, our concept for today, um, here, are, here are some examples for you to sort of think about. I'll do one first example right now. And so for this example, I'm going to do it. It's kind of in 3D, but the problem still ends up being a fairly simple uh, 1D problem or 2D problem if you ignore one of the, if you ignore the vertical direction. So I'm going to do one large disk as a flat circular platform. And I'm going to make my Z axis go upwards like this. So this is my Z. And the platform is anchored at the center point O. And this is going to rotate around and around. And in fact, I'll give you the direction. If it goes around in this direction, the counterclockwise direction, that's a positive rotation. Okay. And there's a, there's a person standing on the edge of this platform. And everything starts at rest. Okay. And the, the radius of this platform will be RP. Okay, so I'm going to say person stands at edge of the platform. Whole thing's at rest. Initially. Okay, and then what's going to happen is this person is going to start running. And so when this person starts running, he's going to run around the edge in this counterclockwise direction. So here's the person 
person's going to be running with VP. But as the person starts running, he's basically applying a force on the bottom of his shoes on the platform. And the platform's also going to start rotating. And what do you expect just from balance of all the forces? The platform is very likely going to rotate this way. And I'll call that my omega p. In fact, let me change the, the, the letters here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this my v. Let's do a vh to separate it from a platform p. h will be our h for human. OK? So uh, let's see, some more information. So we're going to do weight of the human is going to be 750 newtons. Weight of the platform, 1,500 newtons. And we give you a whole bunch of other things. So we're going to give you uh, radius of gyration of the platform, radius of the platform. Okay, we'll tell you that it's frictionless at the axis O. And we'll say that person runs along edge. at 1.2 meters per second with respect to the platform. Oops. And the question? We just want you to find the angular velocity of the platform when this person is running. when person running. Okay. So, so the, logic, the logic behind this problem is going to be the following. The person running along the edge of the platform, you can think of that person as a particle in this particular problem. The platform itself, though, has a radius of gyration given to you. And it's large and it's a big disk. It's got to be considered a rigid body. But the two things, the particle and the platform, the particle and the rigid body, it's a system of particles. And whatever forces might be happening between the shoes of that person and the platform itself, the friction that's necessary for the person to push off, all of those are internal forces. And so what happens to internal forces or internal moments? They're all going to eventually cancel if you're going to apply the principle of momentum and impulse. Right? They're equal and opposite to each other. So it means that this entire system has to be conserved. Right? So it's pretty obvious in this particular case, momentum is conserved. And it's not just momentum that's conserved. But it's more accurately to say that it is actually the angular momentum that's conserved. Basically, things that are, the things that are rotating around and around, point O specifically, right? So the angular momentum is conserved, and it's conserved about O, right? OK, so based on, based on the equations that I've showed you, especially this one right here, for the, for the conservation momentum, you know, you're inclined to write something like this, right? H O 1 is equal to HO2, but it's more involved than that. You really should be saying HO of the human, right? One plus HO of the platform one is equal to HO of human two plus HO of platform two, right? Okay. Or any other way that you like to ensure that you're not forgetting about something in the system. You can write it as a sum if you want, right? Sum of all the particles or rigid bodies. Okay, so let's break this apart. Let's look at initial. Initial is really easy. Everything's at rest. 
So there's absolutely no angular momentum in the beginning. It's a zero on the left hand side. We, gotta, we just got to work out what's happening here on the right hand side. So I'll do a zero and I'll make that equal to the following. So human is going to be running and it's running in the positive rotation, counterclockwise rotation, and I am treating it as a particle. So guess which equation you're going to use? You're going to use the typical R cross MV, right? And the R cross MV, think of it, right? You're basically looking from the top down. Everything is in this XY plane. So R cross MV, or R times MV theta, whatever you like to say, really is just going to be R at the edge of the platform multiplied by mass of the human, velocity of the human. So there's your, there's your uh, angular momentum of the, of, the, of the human. And then we're going to add it to the angular momentum of the big platform, but it's a rigid body, so we start to use what we know about mass moments of inertia. It has to be capital I-O because it's a fixed point O that we're rotating against. And we're really interested in omega p final, All right? OK, so so far I've written it down, and I've, I've sort of ignored signs and notations, but we're going to have to really pay attention to signs um, in the next few lines of our, of our solution. So what do we mean by that? The vh and the omega p, two unknowns. We so far only have one equation. There has to be something else that links it. And we haven't even really used the information yet, 1.2 meter per second with respect to platform. So when I, when I word it like that, the 1.2 meter per second is velocity of the person with respect to platform. The subscripts give it away. It has to be VH dash P, human with respect to platform, which means what? Which means we need a relative velocity equation. So you can imagine, right? VH must be VP plus VH over P, right? OK, so that's where, well, that's where all the pieces come together. Now we're certain that for VP, P is the platform. The platform is also linked to our omega P. OK, now in my, in my notes, I've actually indicated here that uh, omega PF in this particular direction, I've actually used a a positive value to indicate already that it must be rotating in the clockwise direction. It's just my intuition telling me it must be opposite the direction of the person. And the way I view this is the following, right? If I'm going to test my drawing skills here, here's my really, really happy person running on the platform. Here's the platform, right? And the person goes this way, so VP, but this is my VH, and this is my VP, right? So I want to be clear, this VP is the velocity of the platform at the outer edge. This must be my omega PF times RP, right? Just like outer edge of any disk, and I'm going to take that as just a positive value knowing that my omega P is in this particular direction. So if I, if I take this as my sign convention, use this as uh, accounting for signs, right? then let me rewrite my conservation of momentum equation for you. OK, so I'm going to rewrite conservation of momentum. in terms of omega p f, okay? I'm going to do the following. I'm going to say vh is equal to negative omega p f r p plus my 1.2, okay? This one here. already accounts for clockwise rotation.
Okay? And so we should have the following RP MH VP uh, VH is going to be 1.2 minus omega P F R P. So I'm just substituting that into my VH. And then I'm going to add that to my IO. So it's going to be M of the platform radius of gyration of the platform squared, MPKP squared, multiplied by negative omega P F. Right? Okay? So, so I know, I know this, this is going to be confusing, but because of the fact that I said this equation up here, I, I hadn't really considered my signs properly yet. Make sure that you make a note of it in your notes. This really should be a minus sign, or if you want, you can say plus negative like that. Right? That, that should be negative now, given my new, my new sign convention. And so you're going to make all of this equal to 0. Okay, and just so you have some numbers here to plug in when you check at home, got RP times mass of the human is one of these, the weight divided by 9.81, 1.2 minus omega P F. that. That's our I. And so our, our omega p, the angular velocity of the platform, positive value 0 0.175 radians per second, as expected, because I, my intuition wasn't lying to me. Clearly, if everything starts at rest, if momentum, angular momentum is conserved, the human has positive angular momentum, the platform then must have negative angular momentum. And so that's why it worked out to be positive. Now, Make sure, that, make sure that you're aware, right? I, I just used this sign convention here. I guarantee for you that if you stuck with just not knowing or not assuming omega p is in any direction and you thought it was actually going in the same direction as the human, if this were positive, and this were positive, right? And this were positive, and this were positive, you would get the exact same number with a negative sign in front. So nothing, nothing changed. The, the answer is still the same. OK? OK, so that's my first example on conservation of momentum. Any questions on that? No? OK, so now I'm going to do one more. Let's do one more where I combine the, the need to use conservation of momentum, but also uh, principle of linear momentum. So I'll do another example and say the following. So I've got a, I've got a slender rod hanging from the ceiling it's got a length of 0.75 meters. Ceiling point A, end of rod point B. And hanging down straight down and it's at rest. And what I'm going to do is do one of these firing bullet type problems. So there's going to be a bullet that's fired at the slender rod. OK, 
Okay? And it's 0.6 meters below the ceiling, so it's a little bit above the end of that rod. Velocity of the bullet is given to you. Mass of bullet, mass of the slender rod, Okay, and then we're going to tell you that the bullet embeds into the rod over a very specific period of time in, let's see here, we'll say that this is in delta t equal to one millisecond. Okay, so we're giving you a very important piece of information, may give you a clue as to what the impulse might be because we're dealing with time. Okay, so the bullet does embed, and then because it embeds into the rod, the whole rod is gonna swing up. So just imagine that the rod is gonna eventually swing up like this when the bullet has been embedded, and you're asked to do the following, find A, Find the velocity of the center of mass G of the bar, say bar plus bullet after impact. And you're asked to find average reaction forces. during impact. Okay. So where do you think we should start with this problem? We Sorry? Write the equations first. Write the equations first? Okay. What equations should I write? Like conservation of momentum. Okay. So we should start with some conservation of momentum. Okay, what kind of conservation of momentum should I do? Should I do conservation of linear momentum? Let me put my axes here. Let me do, just for fun, I'll do y and then x to the left, right? The bullet's coming in from the right, so I'm gonna force you guys to kind of make a mirror image of this if you want. X is positive to the left, okay? So what should I, what should I do? Should I do? Should I do linear momentum if I did this? M, B, VB1, right, plus MAB, VAB1, okay? Well, not necessary, right? Because the rod is hanging straight down, so that's got to be zero. It's just the linear momentum of the bullet initially. And then I'm going to add a bunch of impulses. So what, what impulses? If this is my, looks like everything's happening in the x direction. So let's focus on x. I've removed the vector notation. It's just the x component. In fact, I'll put a little, let me put a little x here, right? One x. What goes in here? Sum of forces in the x, right? And a dt. What are the sum of forces in the x? Maybe we should draw a free body diagram. All right, let's draw a free body diagram. So if I draw a free body diagram, okay, and here's the rod. Looks to me like there's an MABG, so there's weight downward, 
And then the whole question part B, what is it asking for? It's asking for your reaction forces at the top of the joint here. So let me call that AY, AX, right? OK, so it looks to me like from this free body diagram, right? The bullet, the bullet is going to embed, right? So the bullet embeds, and there's going to be action reaction forces. So there's going to be a force from the rod on the bullet, a force from the bullet on the rod. Those cancel, no impulse. But AX, AX has to be my big one, right? Must be an AX in there. That's got to be my reaction force. And then it's going to be equal to, looks to me like a sum of the bullet and the rod together. Right? And then at this point, it should be the final velocity of the whole thing, right? Final, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure out what that V final is in a second. But I think, I think this would be reasonable for, for linear momentum. So what things do we have that are unknown? This AX appears to be unknown. And this VF is unknown. I, I need another equation. I got too many unknowns. What else could I try to do? Anybody? OK, so, so if you've done FX, you might want to try FY. FY will tell you some things, maybe AY and MG. They balance, but I can tell you that it's actually not going to reveal a whole lot because mg is so small compared to these ax, ay forces, which I'll show you in a second. The key really is this angular momentum, right? Remember in rigid bodies, we've got a set of three, right? There's always going to be three things, right? The two forces, x and y, and then the, the momentum. But what about the momentum? If I did it about g, right, or if I did it about a, what do you think happens if I do it about A? What's that? Do it about A is great, right? Do it about A, and basically, there can be no, no moments, right? All these forces are, are, are at point A. They don't have any moment arms to them. This MG actually goes straight down. That doesn't create any moments. So we're actually conserved for angular momentum, right? And so that allows us to do the following. We could say conserved about A. Yeah? It's fixed at A. Not going to move at A. Yeah. Not going to move at A. OK, so let's do, let's do angular momentum of the bullet and the rod, et cetera. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to do MB, VB1. And we're going to now multiply this by the moment arm of the bullet initially. That has to be 0.6 meters. And then what I need is somehow angular momentum at the very end when the bullet and the, and the rod, or the bullet has embedded the rod, right? And the whole thing is going to swing up. It's a rigid body. So what do we do? We actually need this. We need like an I of A, but the whole thing, right? Bullet plus rod, right? We need an IA for the bullet plus rod multiplied by omega. That's the only way this makes sense, right? right? So the, the rod hangs straight down. That's 0. Bullet is a particle with this as our moment arm. And now it's this. So let me rewrite this. MB VB1, 0.6, and our IA. So what does IA look like? Slender rod at the very end. So 1 third MAB L squared, OK, with the bullet embedded in it, plus MB. And what is a particle's mass moment inertia? mb r squared, so 0.6 squared. This is a little b, right? 
whole thing multiplied by omega. Any questions about that formula? OK? Let me repeat. Rod hanging from A, right? And this is bullet. OK, does this make sense to everybody? Does it not make sense to anybody? Please. Yeah? OK. Need that. Yeah? Why is it what? OK. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this again, right? So I'm going to show you now embedded picture. Right here, bullet, right? Embedded. The whole thing is swinging about A. So this is my omega. And I want you to find I A total. Right? And so it's like the equation for any particle that is rotating about a point, mass moment of inertia of any particle is m r squared. Okay? So that r right there, this right here, I'm going to call that my r b. Okay? So then i of the bullet is m b r b squared, m b 0.6 meters squared. OK? So it looks to me like if I do that, I have to figure out what I got everything. So I just solve for omega. OK? So you solve for omega. Omega is 9.46 radians per second. I still got to solve for part A. Part A says, Find VG, right? So what's VG? VG is going to be now not the whole rod, but halfway up the rod, right? So it's got to be basically magnitude of this is our omega times L over 2. OK? So this will be our 9.46. And our full length is 0.75 meters divided by 2. So our VG will be 3.55 meters per second. And give you an I here. OK. OK, so recap for part A. To find the velocity at point G, we had to first figure out omega. And we did that with just conservation of angular momentum. Part B, though, was asking you for reaction forces. So now you're not going to get away with trying to do all your moments about A. You have to reveal what actually AX and AY are. And the equation that I had on this board previously was that linear momentum principle principle of linear momentum equation. So we got to go back to that. OK? So I have, to, I have to go back and repeat my line here. But back to my linear momentum, OK? OK, so I'll just repeat myself a little bit here, but you can follow along. Here's my MAVAB1 for the rod, and that's 0. And then I had my M bullet V bullet 1x. Okay, So that's known. And then I'm going to add, and this was like an integral, right? The integral was sum of all the forces AX times a delta X, right? or a DX integrated. So I'm going to replace this now with AX delta t, all right? 
Right? The question asked specifically for this particular form. Why? Because it said average reaction forces, right? Average reaction forces over the duration of the impact. Duration was the one millisecond. This is now average AX. And I'm going to make this equal to my final, okay? my final linear momentum. OK, so how are we going to do this? Well, I actually now have a final VG for my rod, so that's helpful. right? And I don't want to mess around with trying to combine the bullet and the rod, because then all of a sudden my G changes. right? Wouldn't my center of mass be shifted because the bullet is now embedded? So the easiest way to do this end of the right-hand side of this momentum equation, guess what? It should be an MB and almost like a VB final, like a VB2. What is the velocity of the bullet after it's been embedded at that location. And I'm going to add it to an MAB VAB2. Right? So all that makes sense. What is this now? This must be from part A. This is from A, the VG. The VG is our VAB2. Right? Because you do all your linear momentum about center of mass for a rigid body, right? Does that make sense? <laughs> okay, so if that makes sense, let's plug some numbers in here. Mass of the bullet is 30 grams. Velocity of the bullet, okay? And then I'm going to add that to AX delta T, one millisecond, equal to mass of the bullet times velocity of the bullet as it swings up. Well, now we got to use omega of the final rotation of the whole thing, which is my 9.46 radians per second. But I got to use this as my distance. This is the location of the bullet. It was swinging up while it's embedded. It's like an omega r. So it has to be 9.46 radians per second multiplied by a 0.6. And this is like an omega rb. OK, so that's our mv momentum of the bullet when it's embedded. OK, and then I'm going to add that to mass times velocity Vg of the rod. So 4 kilograms is the rod. Vg is what I solve for in part A. This is part A. Right? Everything looking good? And then so finally, AX is Okay, final answer, positive value a large, large force, 2,400 newtons, to the left in the same direction as the bullet. Question? Uh, do we know that we have to look for AX as this is our reaction force? The question is, how do, we, how do we know we have to look for AX as the reaction force? When we say reaction force, it has to be the reaction force at the fixed pin. It's a pin there, right? So there were no other, there were no other forces. You should, be, you should be drawing your free body diagram and just locating all possible forces. Good question. Only in the x, what happens to ay? You have a question up there? It cannot, not, not, it can't be interpreted that way. So the question was asking reaction forces at the pin, because what you're saying is internal forces when they collide. 
It's the same, same thing as internal forces when you have billiard balls hitting each other during the particle section, right? So you're not, you don't need to actually analyze that part. Let's get to AY. Okay, what about AY? So AY was the one where when we, draw the free, when we drew the free body diagram, I did this, right? I did an MABG, and then I did an AY. A free body diagram is a free body diagram, right? I've isolated the slender rod, right? And so when you've isolated the slender rod, you just got to ask yourself where all the forces are. So there's only going to be one at the joint, AY, at the, at, the, at, the, um, at, the, at the rod's pinned point, and there's one MG. That's all, that's all you can work. Yeah, go ahead. Why is AX acting to the left? Excellent question, too. Why do you think AX is asking, acting to the left? Let me deal, I've got some time, I've got five minutes. Let me do two minutes of this AY and I'll get to your question in a second, right? So AY, I wanna show you that here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna do an M bullet, V bullet, one Y. Guess what that is? Zero, there's no velocity in the Y direction, right? And then you're gonna do an M A B, V A B, one, one Y. Guess what, it's hanging straight down, it's at rest, zero, right? And then you're going to make this sum of all of your forces in the x. It's going to be an ay minus an mg, right? And then it's going to be all of your momentum in the y direction immediately after impact. So there's not a whole lot of angle for the rod immediately after impact. It's really, really small. It's actually pretty close to zero, right? So you do all this, and all you end up with is simply that ay must be an mg, right? It's pretty, this is a pretty close approximation, and what's the mass of the bullet times g? It's around four kilograms times about 10, right? 9.81, so it's like 40 newtons, right? Really, really small. All of the reaction forces were in the x, not in the y. The y was almost negligible, okay? So that's, that's where that comes from, and you're likely not gonna need that but really, really good for you if you happen to be in an exam situation, if you wanted to try it out, you gotta really convince yourself that AY is not necessary. So here's my take on why I, AX goes to the left. How many people's intuition said they should go to the right? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so bullet gets embedded. Here's how I view it. Think, think, about, think about linear momentum in a way where once this bullet hit, the whole thing actually wanted to shift this way, right? And so clearly this thing is trying to hold it back that way. So you would think that it's a force that, that tries to hold it back that way. Um, but I'm not so certain about that. I, I actually feel that if you zoomed in to where the connection point was, right? And I, had, and I had my rod here, hanging straight down, right? When this thing hits and it's about to rotate, it's likely doing that, right? And so the action and reaction forces are such that this edge of the pin is basically pushing on the rod that way, right? In other words, in other words, the momentum, the angular momentum of the bullet, it was going so fast at that particular location that it was twisting it, rotating it up this way, and, and this force here is actually pushing it to try to keep it from rotating up too fast, right? And so, so the analysis is such that, I don't know if there's a better way to explain it, but the whole thing is swinging up like this, right? 
Um, and then the VG, the VG is also going up this particular direction, right? But the VG is now significantly slower than the initial velocity of the bullet. Whatever is happening here is basically your combination of the linear momentum and angular momentum making everything agree with each other. And that's just, that just has to be the case. OK? Yeah. So if you're uh, supporting third gear force to the left, but doesn't that, it's, it becomes like not fixed anymore? Because then, like, because of that empty, because there's no force acting from the right, it starts to like move a bit to the other end. It's not fixed anymore? Because like, if in that case you are the, at that slot, it's exerting force to the left. But doesn't that, it's not fixed anymore because that, because, because it then begins to move? Because there's no force acting on the left. No. No, so like, I mean, let's, OK, I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you one other explanation. I'll give you one other explanation. Remember that we've treated the rod and the bullet as an entire system from the very beginning, right? So look at this diagram here as before bullet is embedded. No linear momentum, all linear momentum to the left, right? So once it gets embedded, how is it possible to have linear momentum on the right-hand side match what was its original linear momentum from the left-hand side? This force basically took up all of that momentum, right? Yeah. Uh, when doing linear momentum and uh, forces, we're always thinking about g, right? Like, there, you have to. That's you have to, yeah. Okay, but when yeah. you're doing angular, you can choose that form where it doesn't rotate. Correct. Very important point. When you're doing linear momentum, consider everything at point g. When you're doing angular momentum, you can choose any convenient point, usually g or a fixed point of rotation. OK? All right, yeah, this one might be a little counterintuitive. Just uh, I would say two things, right? One, go home and check the numbers yourself. And then try to think logically about what it might mean physically and how it is opposite your intuition. OK? All right, so we'll pick this up again on Wednesday. And then we'll start, we'll start on uh, the last section of the course, vibrations.